Hi everyone, Aiden here with eTrailer. Today we're taking a look at the Yakima Ridgeback on the back of our 2023 Chevrolet Tahoe. The Ridgeback is a hanging style bike rack. It'll hold the bike up here by the frame, hanging down below that. It keeps it in place with two zip strips over the top, holding it down into our padded cradles, with a third one around the seat post limiting our side-to-side -side movement. Now, because it's a hanging style rack, we do want to avoid carbon frame bikes because any sort of frame contact can damage that frame. With alternative frame bikes and kids bikes, we're probably going to need a bike adapter bar to ensure that the bike either hangs level or that it fits over this dual arm design at all because these dual arms just aren't as friendly to the smaller kids frames. In addition to that, you are going to have a 150 pound weight capacity for the whole bike rack. If you're carrying just a single bike on this innermost cradle, you can hold up to 40 pounds for that one bike, but with it fully loaded, it's going to be 150 pounds. Now this one holds four bikes, but you can get a five bike version. That one, the weight capacities don't change at all, so just be mindful of that as you're loading it up. And as far as the function of the bike rack goes, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Those zip strips are really easy to use because you just pinch the tabs on the side, pull the zip strip out, or just pop it in and ratchet it down whenever you're ready to go. Getting it unloaded. You will want to make sure you set these to the side and keep an eye on them because they do just fully remove and you don't want to lose them. If you do, we do offer replacements if you need it. And I'll just set these up on the side for right now and with all of them removed, slide the bike off. Pretty straightforward. I will say that because of the height here of your vehicle and the rack, it is very high up to lift that bike. So it is a little bit cumbersome, but overall not terrible. Definitely manageable. I'll set this to the side. And then I always like to replace those zip strips first, just so I can keep track of them down here in the shop. But you may consider keeping them in your car rather than leaving them on the bike rack. Really up to you however you choose to do that. And with this, you do have a way to tilt the rack down and gain access to the back of your vehicle. There's a black lever out front of the mast that you can pull and lower the whole rack down. This allows us to open up the back hatch, gain access to anything we might need inside, or just have a place to sit down and change our shoes before or after our ride. You do have to do this with the bikes unloaded because of how far it tilts down though. Because of this, the bikes would make contact if we left them in place. As you lift it back up, keep your fingers away from the latch because it will snap back into place pretty aggressively and it will pinch your fingers. And from here, we can check out some measurements. We'll start out with our distance added to the back, going from the bumper to the outer edge of the rack. It's gonna be coming in right at 38 and a half inches. Not too bad, but we can save some of that space using the gray lever on top for the arms. Again, keeping your fingers clear and folding the arms down. This is gonna cut our distance down to only 12 inches added to the back. So it's a lot more manageable for your parking spaces or maybe even your garage at home. At the bottom for ground clearance, we are working with 19 inches right on the dot to the bottom of this fin. It's a metal plate that'll guard the anti-rattle hand knob there and protect it from bottoming out. As you add bikes to the outside, that ground clearance may change depending on your bike, so just be mindful of that. And while we're down here, we can check out that anti-rattle knob. It's tool-free and gets things solid and secured in the hitch. It does lock up for security as well. At the hitch, it's working with our two inch by two inch receiver tube using the included adapter sleeve and just uses a little pin that's attached to the actual shank to secure it in place of the hitch pin hole. And if you're looking for a hanging style bike rack, that's gonna be easy to use. The Ridgeback is definitely a nice choice. It doesn't do great in terms of weight capacity. Options like the Kurt Premium hanging style bike rack are gonna give you much better weight capacities, especially up into that five bike version. But with this, it's easy to use. Those levers to tilt and fold the arms are just much nicer than pins and clips. So if you don't need a whole bunch of weight capacity and you don't need anything more than what this offers, I think this is nice and easy to use. Thanks for watching. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side to side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. 
Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which will see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. And finally, we have the full speed bumps, where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.